one of the first challenges uh, beginner guitar players encounter is really changing strings. If you break a string or you just want to change them because they're old, uh, you're going to need to know how to change strings by yourself. And the first thing you're going to want to do is just get familiar with the concept of string gauges and understand what gauges go for each string. Um, as you're probably already aware, the strings are tuned E, B, G, D, A, and E from the first to the sixth string. And when we talk about string sizes or string gauges, we would say something like the E string is a 12. And what that actually means is that the diameter is 0 0.012 inches for this string, but most guitar players would just call that a 12. And in that sense, the B string is somewhere around a 16.016, the G is a 24.024, the uh, D is a 32.032, the A is a 42.042, and the E is somewhere around 53.053. Of course, string gauges can change a little bit, but generally with acoustic guitars, that's a ballpark um, that you want to be familiar with. So what I'm going to do today is explain how to change a couple strings on an acoustic guitar uh, rather than going through all six. And so the first thing you need to do is pretty obvious, which is just to detune the strings. So I'm going to actually change, let's see, I'll change the fourth string first. And this is the D string. I'm just bringing the pitch down. Sometimes it's a good idea to lo loosen the tension on all of the strings when you change a whole set uh, first. And I've got a tool here. This is a string winding tool, but it also has a little peg uh, piece here where you can actually get underneath the bridge pin, bridge peg, and just pop it up. You can get these at any music store. And so when I pull that out, you'll notice the bridge pin has a slot in it, and that's really important. So you wanna, when you're going to put that back in, you want to make sure that that slot lines up with the string itself. But for now, we're just going to pull the string out. And over at the headstock, fairly obvious here, you're just going to pull out the string. <clears throat> when we put the new string in, you'll notice um, some strings, Diodarios for example, have color-coded ball ends, which is convenient. Uh, this is telling me that this is a black ball end, so this is a, actually a D fourth string, or the uh, 32 gauge in this case. So I'm obviously putting the ball end into the bridge, and then getting the, the bridge pin here. You can see the slotted end is going to line up with the string. And sometimes these can be a little tricky. When you pull, you've got to kind of pull the string tight on the pin. Sometimes it'll pull out. This one seems to be staying. So I'm going to bring it, obviously, all the way over to the headstock. Now, what I want to do is not pull it too tight. I want to leave slack in the string. And here I've got the tuner. You can see on each tuning uh, peg here, I've got a hole, actually, in the peg itself. And I'm just going to feed the string through that hole, fairly obvious, but what I want to make sure you understand is that I'm, I'm going from the inside of the headstock, this area, to the outside. That's going to be critical because we're going to wind, in this case, we're going to wind these around the peg this direction. And um, for the other three, strings one, two, and three will go the opposite direction. But so your string winds are going to go from the inside of the headstock to the out. And so rather than just winding it, as I could do now, I could just sort of kink it a little bit here, catch it, and wind it. What I'm going to do is show you a little trick here that keeps the guitar in tune um, even better. So I'm going to take the end, pull it around, bring it under the string, like that, and then pull it over. And as you can see, that sort of is going to make a little clamp there. I'm going to wind up bringing the string around when I tune up the fourth string here, and it's actually going to, the string's going to clamp down on itself, just like that, if you can see that. And that's just going to secure the string, hold it in, in place. And as I wind the string, I'm going to progressively try to make sure that the winds go down. That's actually really important. That's going to keep the string low uh, at the headstock, and what that will do is it'll pull the angle of the string at the string nut, so that the, uh, the tone of the open string is a little better. So you always want to have the, have the wraps go down. I'm going to use the string winder, which is obviously convenient. And really, at that point, you, uh, the most important thing when you're winding is just being sure that the string doesn't have too much slack in it and that you, your wraps are going down, as I mentioned. And then I've got the uh, fourth string there in the slot at the nut, and it's as simple as that. So most string winders, or at least the good ones, have a little uh, wire clipper on the end as well. And it's pretty obvious what we're doing with that. 
going to clip it off. And be careful, those can be kind of sharp. So sometimes it's a good idea to try to bend those down a little bit. Um, probably not with your fingers. You bend those out of the way. That way they won't stab you later on. And then you just tune it up like normal. Um, one thing about uh, new strings is that they're going to need to stretch a little bit. And that's, that's just uh, happens with all new strings. You're going to need to kind of get them stretched out for a day or two before they really stay in tune well. So now what I'm going to do is change the first string. Same idea, just bringing, actually why don't we use the string winder, that's what it's for. Okay, take that off, again with the uh, the bridge pan over here. Take that out. So in this case, the first string, the ball end on the first string, is silver. And that's a 12 gauge, or 0 0.012 diameter. And find the pin. Again, the slot follows the string. Uh, this one's catching as well. And then the same concept applies over here when I bring it through the hole in the bridge pan. Again, um, I'm moving it, I'm sending it through this side, so it's from the inside of the headstock to the outside. Uh, obviously if we did it this way, it's going to wrap around the wrong direction. And that just kind of causes all kinds of problems, and certainly then you've got to tune the string the, the opposite direction you normally would, so it just makes things confusing. So again, with this, what I'm going to do is rather than just tune it up as it is, I'm going to bring this the loose end around underneath the string and then pull it up. So the string's clamping down. I'm going to use the string winder. Again, I've got the first finger. That's kind of the trick, really, is using that first finger to hold the string down so it doesn't get away from you. <clears throat> and this way, and this way you're also in control of keeping the wraps going down, which again is important. So I'm trying to get at least two good wraps around the tuner. Um, any less than that and you kind of risk tuning problems or the string coming right out of the, the tuner, but you know, you'll probably get about five or six on this one. I generally need that many, but that'll, that's fine. And then rather than clipping that off, as I mentioned before, I'll show you another little trick. If you don't have a wire clipper and you don't want to stab yourself with these uh, strings, you can take the edge of a guitar pick, usually a heavy guitar pick, and what you want to do is curve it so that it's right on the edge of the uh, pick. So the, and you're, I'm holding that down with my thumb, as you can see. And what I'm going to do is just pull it really tightly towards me so that it's really pulling tight against the edge of the pick. And those are the basics for restringing an acoustic guitar.